Hello and welcome to part one of High Performance Imports V6 commentary. Here we are again in Sendai Highland looking at GTRs, but this time it's not drag racing. This is the Sendai Highland Racing Circuit, uh, which sadly no longer exists. Uh, but it was quite a long track, as you'll see on this video. Uh, this was a Mechadoc meeting. I assume that was the name of the club. I can't even remember now. I do recall I came up to this uh, event because there was circuit racing and also drifting on the same day. They had a little track behind the pits uh, that they used for drifting. So anyway, let's get started. The most active level of racing in Japan is what they call Sunday racing. This requires only a basic race license and most entrants are using street driven cars. Even so, this club meeting at the Sendai Highland Circuit had plenty of very quick GTRs in attendance. This is a brand new R34 M Spec newer probably the most desirable of all GTRs. This isn't a GTR, but the 260 RS Stagia uses all GTR running gear in a wagon body. The M-Spec newer was uh, one of the shortest run versions of the uh, R34 GTR. Uh, they fetch an awful lot of money if you can find one today. Though there were some big singles, most cars were using twin low mount turbos. A good example of a club racing GTR is this R32. Though it is heavily modified, it has been built on a more modest budget than some. The bottom end of the engine is still standard, but it makes plenty of power with Nismo LM type turbos and a tuned computer with Mines airflow meters. Presumably the, uh, the ECU would have been a uh, Mines tuned ROM. That was after all one of their most popular products. The owner, Hidehiko Hanyu, is not too concerned about detailing, but do-it-yourself tricks like the trim around the inner cooler and the vent behind the oil cooler all make a difference on the circuit. The brakes are Brembo's from the V-Spec version, with 17 by 9 inch SSR wheels carrying Bridgestone semi-slick tyres. Underneath there are no special suspension links, just a set of coilover shocks and some basic alignment tweaks. Inside the trim has been stripped out with a basic roll cage and rear tower brace. To preserve the engine, Hitohiko changes at around 7000 RPM. We also spotted this control module fitted to the Atessa system. To see how well this all works on the track, we stuck our in-car camera in the back for a timed lap. I did this, I didn't actually have any timing equipment, uh, but what I was able to do though was um, take the time code from the videotape and then manually animate the the timing uh, that you'll see in the corner in a minute
didn't bother having it going the whole time because there wasn't really any point. <laughs> Japanese tracks generally is they tend to have a lot of hairpin bends or, or at least full 180 degree bends because they're located up in the mountains and they literally have to keep crossing back on themselves. Notice also uh, he's wearing a lovely pair of racing gloves. Um, for some reason they're really big on that in Japan. They, they don't mind if you don't have a racing suit uh, but they always want you to have some kind of gloves on even at uh, drifting events. It makes sense though because if you roll your car and you need to climb out uh, there's likely to be glass everywhere so fair enough <laughs> Hitohiko has run faster, but a 208 is still quick, given that the track is still slightly wet. A far more serious entry is this R34 GTR, owned by Hiroyuki Kanazawa, one of the official HKS test drivers. For a start it has much larger brakes, with Ferrari F50 Brembo calipers at the front. Behind the Nismo front bar there is a larger inner cooler, with all custom piping in the engine bay. There are many special bolt-on parts, like the split fire coils, HKS fuel rail, an ARC radiator and header tank system. This car also has Nismo LM turbos, supporting around 600 horsepower, with HKS actuators fitted for better boost control. Tayan's new electronically adjustable coilovers have also been fitted with an awesome titanium tower brace. The exhaust is also all titanium, with dual oil coolers mounted under the rear end for the transmission and differential. The standard trim is mostly intact, apart from the Recaro race seat. This car uses a Hollinger six-speed sequential transmission, which is a major advantage on the circuit. The Blitz Boost Controller also has a high boost switch mounted on the steering wheel. Watch as we take a ride and you'll see Hiroyuki holding the high boost switch on straight sections of the track. That's a pretty well set up circuit car actually. Uh, quite a lot of expensive bits, especially the Hollinger.
a pretty big gap, really. Um, you can see how much harder he was pushing, um, given that he's uh, got a bit higher budget to work with as well. You can see where he's got his right thumb on the steering wheel. That's the uh, overboost switch. He wasn't running really high boost, though. I think uh, it sort of took it up from 1.2 bar up to 1.4, something like that. Uh, but he, the way he was passing those cars, you can see he had a decent amount of power. An amazing seven seconds faster than the R32 and still well short of the car's best time. Well, that's it for uh, that little bit of circuit racing. I think I did uh, film a couple of other cars on the day, but I couldn't find a way to put them together that made sense for the video. Anyway, that's it for part one. I'll be back with part two very soon. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.